Now, we've all dreamed of finding buried treasure or discovering something fantastic, literally, right at our feet. In the 1970s, two farmers discovered the terracotta army in China, uh, purely by accident, but closer to home, in Mels on the Wirral. There is possibly something just as fantastic buried beneath the car park of the Railway Inn Hub. Uh, joining us now to tell us more are Domingo, uh, Domingo Devitt and Professor Stephen Harding from the Wirral Archaeological Society, plus uh, Pub General Manager Lisa Jones. So we've got everybody here. Good afternoon to you Good all. Afternoon. Hi, Billy. Afternoon. There Hi, we Billy. go. Hi, okay. Yeah, it's great to have you all with us. Um, now, we're going to start with you, Lisa. You're the general manager of the railway. And I have to say, I do uh, I do like the odd pint in there as well. Yep. It's not about drinking yeah. <laughs> in the railway. How did it feel? When you found out that maybe something important, you know, a, a relic uh, been buried beneath your car park, what did you? What did I, you think? I think we've always known it's something down something, there. Something, yeah. Some, something's always been there. So um, for the three years that I've been at the railway, um, it's always been talked about, and and uh, um, it's just really exciting for everybody. And the uh, the main question all the time is, is when they're going to do anything about it. Right. Okay. So now to actually be part of it is just absolutely amazing, and we're just all so excited, and and it's just amazing. I think the whole community is just. Really really just can't wait and everybody's asking Domingo's drop some leaflets off for us and oh my word they, they've gone within within hours they, they, they just disappear on me constantly so I think it's just really really exciting that you know of, of our age we're, we're going to be here to see what it is and, and, and what's happening you know it's really it's really fascinating it's a, it's a great story mm. it's so exciting so uh, uh, D Domingo Devitt is also with us uh, from the Wirral Archaeological Society so tell us more about the society first of all so um we were set up a couple of years ago right. as a community interest company uh, and we are a local not-for-profit voluntary group and uh, we're keen, enthusiastic and knowledgeable amateur historians. Right, OK. And we are dedicated to researching the rich heritage of the Wirral and sharing that knowledge with the local community. And so we have several projects that we, we look at we're investigating and this is one of our projects and of course this is just coming to fruition now mm -hmm. after many many years right. of trying to get it across the line <laughs> what, what's your job at the society what's your so, role um, i'm the chairman of the company uh, i'm also the press and pr officer right so i've got sort of a dual role there um, and obviously when we do um, when we actually activate a project mm -hmm. and we've got another one being activated later Great. in the year that's a, not not this one, but another one. Um, then the the PR machine swings into right. a well-oiled <laughs> mechanism, takes over. Then you know, so um, so my job is to oversee the whole thing um, and make sure that everybody is working in the right way, really. So what is actually buried there? Because Lisa mentioned sort of like there's something there. Uh, what is that? Do you know what's buried there? No, the nobody knows. Right. Um, and the story began 85 years ago in 1938, right, believe it or okay. not, when they were building the railway inn because yep. there was an old pub there and they were building the new pub. And one of the workmen was a chap called John McRae. Mm -hmm. And he um, uncovered what he described as the hull of a clinker built boat and right. a clinker built means where the, the the planks overlap each other mm -hmm. as opposed to being edge to edge sure. and the style of clinker built boat is um was perfected by the scandinavians right. and particularly by the vikings okay. which is why everybody was speculating that it might have been a viking boat. yeah and there's a big viking connection with with course, Wirral as well yeah. of course not all and of course whole Steve, area. Stephen is the viking expert on the right. world you know so they unfortunately because of the timetable of building the new pub mm -hmm. they were told to cover it up again <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's okay so nobody it's, knew right, okay. what it was but we do know from his notes that yep. he made at the time that it's between eight and twelve foot down it's in blue clay which is a right. preservative mm -hmm. Um, and that it was clinker built, and he estimated from the bit that he'd uncovered that it was about 20 to 30 feet long. It's amazing. So that is all you know, and all anybody has known until we actually do something about it. Right, okay. Now we've also got with us uh, Professor Stephen Harding. Um, uh, Stephen, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Uh, great to have you with us as well. And um, so, what what's your role? We've just just heard then from uh, Domingo saying that you know you're the you're the expert on on all things um, uh, well Viking ar archaeological um, Viking, on, uh, and Viking uh, uh, specifically. What's your role in the project, Stephen? Well, I'm actually a scientific professor at Nottingham, but uh, I'm right. a Wirral lad. Has brought up actually not far from the 
railway in Cobb. We used to, right. uh, as, as youngsters, mess about in the, the clay quarry, clay pits. Yeah. Uh, I think we got chased off on more than one occasion. <laughs> we had no idea then about the significance of this, right. this clay. Because this boat that uh, uh, Lisa and uh, Domingo have been talking about is very deep on the, mm-hmm. uh, the front of the present uh, pub in this uh, blue clay. And blue clay is an amazing preservative. It's waterlogged blue clay. Bugs can't grow, and therefore the, uh, they can't eat away at the, you know, the wood fiber and things. So whatever it is, uh, we believe is uh, very well preserved. And from its position and, and, and depth, uh, we know it's got to be very, very uh, old, especially if it's been buried in this uh, blue clay uh, material. So my role is working with Domingo and, mm-hmm. and colleagues at Rural Archaeology and also uh, uh, an archaeologist, a distinguished archaeologist, Chaz Jones, who uh, is from the Fulford Battlefield uh, Society. So with, uh, with Chaz, uh, Domingo, and working with the, uh, with, with, with the Railway Inn, who's been absolutely fantastic uh, with the support for this, we hope to finally find out what this mystery uh, mystery <laughs> vessel is and it's, it's 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 amazing really it's uh it's almost like you know ikea came and uh, uh you weren't in so we left a left a boat it could be a boat. <laughs> now we, we we don't know what it is uh, there's lots of speculation right. that it might be viking and the domingo said that the overlapping plank uh, clinker design came from the scandinavians and as you said, uh, Will was what was once uh, a, a thriving uh, Will, uh, Viking uh, colony. So there is a, a possibility. In fact, it's very deep in, you know, buried in the blue clay. Again, it's a, uh, another very curious thing. But uh, we just don't know. And so what we're going to do is we're not going to dig it up because if you dig it up and expose it, then you know all sorts of problems yeah, sure. uh, arise. You let the bugs in and things. Unless you've got six million pounds to you know, properly preserve it and all this mm-hmm. sort of stuff, then uh, uh, you can't do it. But what we can do, we've done the radar scans. So using radar, we, we, we know the vessel is still there and we know that the reports of the McRae's is, uh, are, are accurate. But uh, what we want to do is to go down with, like in narrow bores, we're going to go down with about, cover about 100 holes, four mm-hmm. holes, uh, over a, a wide area in front of the, the pub, and then try and sample uh, what's underneath. We'll sample the surrounding soil, and hopefully uh, we'll hit some wood. And then once we've got these samples, uh, we'll get them uh, properly scientifically dated. Yeah. Uh, we'll find out how old the wood is for a start. That's the most important thing, and that will tell us uh, what sort of age the, uh, the, 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 the vessel is and, and uh, what it might be. Then we'll also find out what sort of uh, wood it is and find out the origins uh, and also the state of preservation, the scientific tests we can do uh, to check the, uh, the preservation. But we're pretty confident with it being in blue clay, uh, it's going to be uh, reasonably intact, however the, the age is. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's very exciting. And the public it, it wants sounds, to know yeah. what it is and yeah. we, 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 we hopefully oh. we'll find out. And as, as, A lot of um, people do, yeah. As, um, as Steve was saying, we, we, you know, nobody's really done anything about this at no, all. No. Uh, um, although it's been talked about for so long and it's become an urban li- <coughs> myth or a legend. Yeah, it's but, gone into that sort of like... But the, yeah. twist, to the twist to the story is that, um, um, sadly, John McRae, who um, made the sketch, died yeah. in the 1990s mm-hmm. and he gave all this to his son and his son gave them all to the Liverpool Museums, his right. sketches and his notes. And there they sat for another few right. years... Until um, 2006 or seven, right. and then the, la- the landlord of the pub at the time was a guy called Neil Johnson, mm-hmm. and he'd applied for planning permission to build a patio outside to put tables and chairs, and Liverpool Museums have a database. And so when when, um, when somebody applies for planning permission and it cross-references with one mm. of their deposits, mm-hmm. something pings, right. and somebody it pinged, and the lady mm. from the museums went round to see Neil Johnson and mm. said, we're a bit worried about this boat under the car park. And he said, what boat? What boat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, and so yeah. our lo- one of our members, who's Tim Baldock, yeah. was a, a local policeman at the time, um, was, um, we, he knew Neil because Neil was an ex-policeman. Mm-hmm. And so Tim thought, well, we really need to do something about this, don't we? So 
he contacted Stephen Harding and then it's sort of gone on from there. But that was 2006 mm -hmm. and it's taken all of this time, even now, to get to this stage. Yeah, well, it is happening now. And if we could just go back to Lisa for a moment. Um, how's this going to affect business at the pub? Um, ho hopefully in a good way. But what we are doing inside the pub is the setting up an information centre. Right. So anybody visiting um, from Saturday onwards basically um, can come and see the information centre and get lots of um, talk talk to, to the boffins mm -hmm. that are going to be there. Right. Uh, we're doing a, a Pacific Day on the Tuesday for the children. So I've contacted lots of like um, Hilbury and Mel's and schools and, and everything to try and get them really interested in it. Um, so it's so, a... So I think the community, again, are that excited over it happening. I think it will be a real buzz for, for, for a week to be, to, to, to be part of this. It, it already feels yeah. very, very exciting. Yeah. Oh, and we, we just can't wait. We're just really excited over it. It's, um, so just back to Stephen, um, uh, just for a moment. Have there been similar discoveries in our local area? Uh, no. Uh, this is, I think uh, this is the first one uh, right. that's that old and in, 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 in blue clay. There's been... Uh, yeah, some smaller vessels found. One found in Morton, and some found mm -hmm. uh, at, uh, at at Warrington. But uh, they not much was found that, that, that was left, and they uh, I think the Warrington ones have, have, have largely uh, disintegrated right. now. So this is now the the blue clay, as I said, is a great uh, preservative. And the <laughs> intriguing thing is that the the great Viking ships in in Oslo, the the, the Gokstad and the Osberg, yeah. was found in they were found in similar sort of uh, material, and they were very well uh, preserved. So, we're hoping very much that, uh, that ours is, uh, and we just don't know what it is. It might be from the Viking Age. If it is Viking Age, then it's not going to be a well, these long ship, you know, Kirk Douglas yeah. long ship. It's, it'll <laughs> yeah. be a fishing vessel or some sort of right. transport vessel. But uh, yeah, it could be anything from from then. Right up to the 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 seventeenth century, although yeah. you know things don't get on in blue clay of their own accord they they're usually put there yeah, either by sure. being buried or by channels being cut, so that's another intriguing thing about this, so yeah. We all want what, to find out what it is. Watch this space is basically what, what we're going to literally watch this space. Got one last thing to say about yeah, sure, it. Yes, sure, um, We raised enough money to do this, yeah. to this investigation, uh, mostly from the University of Nottingham um, and some from Wood Archaeology Funds themselves. Um, we've got enough money to do about four or five wood sampling. Right. So it's quite expensive for mm -hmm. Nexos. So we need about 15,000 to finish off all the samples, but the wood's the most important, obviously, because it might deteriorate. So what we've done is we've set up a GoFundMe page. Okay. And if you go on it and Google, um, put in boat under the car park, you'll see it. Right. And okay. we only set it up on Wednesday, and I think we've got £1,000 already. You you go. Know? Mm -hmm. But if anybody wants to help, It'd be great, you know. That would be lovely. Thank you so much for taking time thank to speak you, to us. Um, Professor Stephen, um, uh, Stephen Harding, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Billy. Thank you. Uh, Domingo, Domingo Devitt, thank you. And also Lisa Jones, of course, General Manager of the Railway. We'll be popping in there for a pint soon. See you later. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Billy, and we'll keep you posted on Absolutely. what we find. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Billy Hoy. ABC Radio Merseyside.